been a long time coming. So as coaches, we're certainly excited. I know our players are definitely ready to go out and, and really run into somebody else. That's always uh, 29 seems like a short period of time, but boy, it, it starts grinding the last couple of weeks. So they're excited to be hitting other people. Um, you know, I know there's uh, typically a lot of teams at this time of year, they'll release their, their two deep and their depth chart. Uh, we're not going to do that. Um, and the reason we're not going to do it, guys, honestly, is because we really need our guys to still be in a mindset of trying to earn their spots. We don't want those guys to, we don't want them to take a lazy step from this point moving forward. And we really have not made those final decisions across the board yet. Um, it's really kind of a fluid deal for us in this first year anyway. It's going to be fluid all year long until somebody stabilizes in a position and really kind of earns it. The good thing for you is a lot of you have been in practice. You've seen kind of the cast of the cast of guys that are out there. So you've got a pretty good idea of who's going to be on the field uh, and at least getting opportunities. Uh, we, we hope to play quite a few people at certain positions, so uh, we'll be able to get evaluation. Now, you know, we're moving into that next phase of evaluation. It's, a, it's a, obviously a game week. It's a great opportunity for us obviously to get this thing started right in the right direction. Um, but the big thing for us also as coaches, we have to look at it realistically as we've, we've seen these guys operate in a controlled environment. Uh, we tried to make it as game like as we can, uh, but there's nothing like the big field other than the big field. So they're about to go out there on the, on the big field by themselves for the first time. And it's part of our evaluation. So now we're going to get to see who can handle it when they're out there on the field and who can make great decisions while we're there. Um, it, it's going to be a lot of fun seeing those guys go out there and, and, and put their training to test. And that's been a big emphasis for us this week. Uh, like I said, a lot of you have been at practice. You have a pretty good idea of who's been repping. Uh, most of those guys, if not all of them, are probably going to see the field on Saturday. Uh, we hope we got some depth there to where we can, we can be able to stay fresh because we hope to play with some tempo. Uh, and that's, hopefully we see that as an advantage. Uh, we, I said last week we have a very good uh, opponent coming in here. Um, these guys have obviously had a lot of success in recent years. Uh, Coach Stiegelmeyer has done a tremendous job with those guys. They are a very talented group. Uh, they've got a quarterback coming back that's got a lot of playing experience uh, and was very successful. If I'm not mistaken, I think he had a 5-2 and two record last year after coming in for a guy that got injured in the first game against Missouri. Uh, he does a good job. He knows where to go with the football. He manages the game well. Uh, he, he can pick you apart. He's a talented guy. Uh, they lost a really good running back last year that uh, I, you know, I think is kind of taking some reps in the NFL right now. I mean, he, he was a talented guy. Uh, but the other guys are really good, too. Uh, they, they've got three returning linemen up front that I think are really good players. Uh, one of them was an all-conference uh, honorable mention pick, and he certainly deserved it. Uh, they've got some guys that are back there, which gives them some uh, stability moving, moving forward. They have really got a very talented wide receiver. Um, the kid's name is Jake Winicky, and he is a tall 6'4 target. He's a big dude. Uh, they just get it close to him, and he goes up and gets it. He runs pretty good, but he uses his body really, really well. Uh, he can run all the routes, and they do a good job of creating ways to get the ball to him. Uh, they run the football really, really well. And because of that, you know, obviously, uh, teams that do that, they do a good job of play action passing when they can get that run game going. Uh, he does a really good job of coaching them. They execute at a high level. I think they're a really sound team up front offensively for sure. They return a lot of guys on defense. Uh, I think they have six on offense and nine on defense coming back. Uh, they have a really strong defensive line, some big, strong cats that do a good job up front holding gaps. Their linebacker core is a really good, good group of guys. Those guys run sideline to sideline. They tackle well. Uh, and then they've got some experienced guys in the secondary. Uh, one of the kids is their punt returner, and he is a very, very talented guy. He can run. Uh, he is probably the most dynamic punt returner uh, that I've seen at that level for sure. He can play just about anywhere. That guy is dangerous, and I don't know that I don't know that fair catch is, is even in his. Uh, I don't know that he even, he even thinks about that. He's going to catch it. He's going to run with it. He's got some. He's got some courage, and he's a really talented guy. We got a, a great challenge ahead of us trying to hem him in because he does a great job. He's really good. Uh, they do a great job in special teams, and like I said, he does a really good job across the board, which is why they've been successful. Uh, and they're not strangers to this environment. You know, coming up and playing at this level, they started with Missouri last year. Missouri won the East, and, you know, they played them hard. Played them really hard at Missouri and started off the game with a long touchdown run right off the bat. So uh, they're used to playing in this environment. It's not something that they're not used to. 
uh, and I know they're coming in here expecting to get after get after us from the word go. So we got to be ready to go. Um, you know, I think they do a great job with what they do schematically, both defensively and offensively. It's a challenge for us moving forward. But um, other than that, I know there's some questions. So let's get started. First game for you in a while as a head coach, going back to your high school days. Um, do you have someone? I don't want to use the term lackey or someone who's an unofficial coach who's going to remind you of certain things or hand you a chart if you need a chart to look at for whether it go for two or one, all those little game details. Do you have anybody helping you out with that? Yeah, you know, you, you've got a lot of resources available to you, and obviously there's a lot of different things that are going on during a, a football game, and then obviously there's other people that are, that are doing their jobs and playing their roles. And, We've got guys that are assigned to help us with obviously with some time management stuff from up in the box. Uh, we obviously have been preparing by the way that we scrimmage and putting us in certain situations. So we really not only help our guys understand it, but help me and our staff understand how we want to manage time situations. So, uh, but I won't do it alone. There'll be some people up in the box that will manage it with us that will help us. So uh, we've got a really good staff that's going to help us with that. So yeah, I think I think we've got a good staff put together. In fourth and short, would you discuss with Likens, uh, and then you make the decision? Well, what what I'll do is I'll let you know. I'll typically rep, let Rob know that he has two downs and one. So if and the, the term for me is very simply, you got two downs. The, you don't have to say anything about one. If he's got two, <laughs> then he's got you know he knows he has it, he has that third down, but he knows he he's got two downs to get it. So it can he can he can gauge his play calling based on that, uh, which that's how how our communication will go from there. And kick punt, kick a field goal, punt, go for it. Is that? Uh, and obviously, you're the ultimate decider. Right. Do you? Who do you consult on those? Most of that will be myself, and then I'll have you know a couple of guys up in the box that I've designated to help me with just knowing exactly where the ball is because you got to make those decisions fast. You know, you want to be able to get the, get those teams out there, particularly if you are utilizing tempo or you're trying to get a sky punt <clears throat> team in or you're trying to get a situational kicking team in, you've got to make sure that you know where the ball is and you can make good decisions. So, yeah, we've got some help up in the box to help us with those situations to try to be efficient so we make those calls timely so we can go to school and the information might get lined up fast. And is there a set number whether you go with Bartolota or Wyman on certain kicks? Or? That's a good question. You know, Wyman is a, kind of our long ball specialist guy. He can, he can really hit it. I think he hit one the other day from – I know, I know for a fact that it was behind midfield for a little while. I mean, he's got a strong, strong leg. Uh, he can hit it. Um, the good thing about him is, I mean, we're in field goal range. When we get inside that 40, we're in field goal range for the most part, at least being able to reach it with him. He's got a really strong leg. The other kid is, is, uh, is uh, very accurate. So we kind of got the best of both worlds there, so we'll utilize both those guys. Is that the biggest concern with, with South Dakota State, just that experience that they have that, that maybe doesn't match up on your side? You don't have a ton of experience. And like you mentioned, they've been into Missouri, and, and they're not scared of that kind of environment. Is, is that maybe the biggest concern with, with this team? Well, I wouldn't call it a concern, but it's something that we have to deal with. Obviously, we understand it, and we know that that's not going to be, enough, that it's not going to be um, a part of their thinking. You know, So uh, they do have guys that have played a lot of football. And they've, they've won a lot of football, which is good for them. You know, for us, we don't control that. Uh, so we control what we do and who we are. And, you know, we've talk, talked about it at length. I, I think the big thing for us is it's we have to now, whether we want to think about it this way or not, this is still an evaluation of where we're at as we go on to the game field. We're going to learn a lot from this game this week, moving forward to the next game. And then our goal is going to be to just get a little bit better each week and see where that takes us. Uh, and we're going to learn a lot from this game. Uh, obviously, our goal is to go into this game and come out of it and, and win it. There's no doubt about that. But we also know there's going to be a byproduct of this game that's going to help us move forward and become a better team, regardless of the outcome. Uh, they are a talented group coming in, uh, and they've played a lot of winning football. So we're going to have to be on point in all areas of the game because they certainly will be. I mentioned how you you got to focus on those little things, but just in general, in game prep as a head coach, has it been different for you, or has it? I mean, what, what's the difference? And has it been easy to adjust to it? From yeah, it, honestly, it has. It has been different because, from my standpoint, I've hired really, really good football coaches, and I want to let those guys do their job. And there's a fine line there 
of being able to get get involved and get in there and start you know messing with what their mindset is. I want those guys to feel free on Saturday, and I want those guys to have their have their minds made up in terms of what direction we're going with the game plan. And you know, I've, I've experienced it in the past. You know, sometimes when you get involved in that, you disrupt the flow. Even though it may be sound, seem like it's going along the same direction, it can disrupt the flow. So my goal has been to be able to let these men do the job that I hired them to do. They're good at what they do. They're really good at what they do. Um, obviously, you guys all know Clint Bowen. I mean, one of my best friends, but I didn't hire him because of that. I hired him because he's a great football mind. He does an unbelievable job defensively. Um, I'm going to trust him to do it. So I stay out of the meeting rooms other than just to sit in there and listen to where they're going and what their direction is and not try to derail them from moving forward. Same thing offensively, Coach Likens and those guys, uh, his whole staff, they all have great ideas. He involves everyone in there. They're mature men when they're in there. It's not just one single voice. It's the whole group working together. So uh, I try to stay out of the game planning part, which is very different for me because I want to step in and say, hey, listen, we can attack this here or – what do you think about this blitz off this certain formation? I, I try to stay out of it because it may disrupt the flow. So those guys do a good job. I need to allow them to do their job.